This is part three variables about using advanced actions. In this section, we're going to look at using variables within the context of this point and click game that's being built. To make these advanced actions work, we're going to need to define some variables. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to think uh, when one of these letters gets clicked or the click box on top of the letter gets clicked, it's going to execute an advanced action and it's going to refer to a variable to change the variable's value based on whether it's clicked or not. So we know that the letters in smile are correct and all the other letters are incorrect. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a variable to where it is associated with the click box on top of each letter and when this variable is uh, accessed that means our program is going to know whether it was clicked on or not and we're going to let the variable start with a value of 0 and if it's clicked we're going to add a value of 1 to it and later on in our advanced action we'll be able to look at the value of that variable check to see if it's either 1 or 0 and determine whether the correct letters have been clicked or not. Creating a variable is a pretty straightforward process. You'll want to go up to the project tab and open up variables. In here you'll uh, have the ability to name the variable right here, assign it a value, and write yourself a helpful description. For this variable we're working on a variable that will be applied to this click box that is over the letter S and so uh, we're going to call it uh, something like red click S. I've already named one down here called red click S and um, so if we click on that we see that here I've named it red underscore click underscore S. Keep in mind when you're writing these item names and variables you don't want any spaces in your names you always either want to use camel case or underscores and here I've gone in and assigned it a starting value of zero and I've described that um, this variable is is accessed when the player clicks S in the red word game and after you do that you just will click add new variable and the variable will be there and it will also, whenever you open up your variables, it'll be in this list of variables that you'll create. It's probably a good idea when you're creating these variables to write out variables in a notepad or on a sheet of paper to keep track of them because they can add up pretty fast. But as far as creating the variables go, it's pretty straightforward just like this and this is how you'll do it. Since creating variables is a pretty straightforward task, the real trick is not so much creating them as knowing when and why to create them and so in this game we need to be able to check and see if our player has um, selected the right letters here in order to um, activate the ability for them to continue in the game so that's why the click box over the am I right is um, going to talk to an advanced action that's going to pull up all the values of these variables and determine um, if when they clicked um, S, it, um, is that variable still zero? Well, if so, they didn't click S, but if the variable has been changed to one, they have clicked S. And this am I right um, advanced action will just check each of these letters, the click box right over them, and determine um, whether those uh, the correct letters smile all have values of one if they don't it's when you click am I right it's going to tell you um, you're wrong but if they're all valued one it's going to let you go forward and so really that's how the variables are working in here and um, that's how they integrate or will integrate into this advanced action that we're fixing to build so next we're going to look at the advanced action and see exactly how they're built and how they use the variables and how they make things happen in the game.